Oh, hello. Hello. Hi. How's it going? Hi. Good. How are you? Yeah, good. Nice to see you guys. Good. Oh, nice to see you. Just... But thank you so much for doing this, honestly. Thank you for your time this morning on a Saturday morning. Oh. Um, I'm, so... I'm a huge podcast fan. I love podcasts. Oh, good. Yeah. How, what, what sort of podcasts do you listen to? Quite like female-led ones. I love, did you listen to Ju- Julia louis Drivers's new one called Wiser oh. Than Me that she released this Ooh. year? Oh, I okay. really recommend it. She right. did her interviewing, because obviously society, there's so much stigma around women getting older and mm-hmm. they're sort of put out to pasture and kind of deemed useless by society. Mm-hmm. Um, and Julia louis Dreyfus was like, I don't know if I can swear, but F that and um, is interviewing all these amazing older women. So she interviews like Jane Fonda, Carol Burnett, um, Isabella Allende, like amazing older women and just talks about aging as a woman and wisdom and it's really beautiful. So I love that one. Oh, that um, sounds brilliant. Yeah, good... but they're like a really, I, I feel like podcasts are so good for like mental health and self-care. Do you know yeah, I mean? absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, sort of talking about self-care and, and mental health we can mm. talk about um I mean in your book you you talk a lot about you know female friendships and coming of age and that sort of thing um and that's sort of one of the topics you wanted to talk about today great um that book was sort of was it written it was written from a really raw place for you is that right yeah I think it's safe to say that all of my 20s were a really raw place <laughs> <laughs> How old are you? I don't mean, to, I don't know if it's okay to ask yeah. you how old you guys are. So I'm 29 and in our last cool. episode, we were, we were talking about turning 30 and how, yeah. how shit scared I am. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's so much better. You know how like everyone's like, it gets better. Being in your 30s is better than your 20s. Everyone said this to me anyway. And when I turned 30, I felt sick and I was like, I'm so old and it felt really scary. But now I'm in my 30s. I'm 32 now. I'm like, oh, it's completely true. It took a while oh. to get it took a okay. minute but I was just like this is scary I'm not sure but now I can very very confidently say it is better um and just to go back to your question about the book yes I think maybe like all of us to some extent I you know in my 20s was just like struggling with a lot of um you know 20s things like kind of my ambition and my identity and um my own sense of feminism and where I stood with that my self-esteem sucked (laughs) for some reason um which I think is a real like pandemic I think women in general there's a self-esteem crisis going on I'm sure social media has a lot to do with it um but yeah all those things influenced the book uh for me I wanted to capture that rawness of being in your 20s in my lead character in the book because um a big thing for me for my mental health that makes me feel better is reading and if I if I can sense a vulnerability in a character in a book that I can relate to it makes me feel much much better and I hoped that that's what I was doing with Joni and my book was exposing that rawness of your 20s that people could relate to. Yeah and also the subject of heartbreak and it not just being as you think with a, with a partner a girlfriend or a boyfriend but with friends I mean we were speaking about it that um really they can be the worst ones when you feel like you're going through a bit breakup with your friends it's mm. it's can be really heart-wrenching and mm. and so emotional as well I mean I've had experience where I remember I, I was with these school friends for years and years up until the age of 16 and your school friends are like your core really aren't mm. they They're the people that you completely grow up with um and I, I changed six forms and I felt like I was going through a breakup with that group of friends because mm. as you grow older you do everyone goes on different paths different universities different jobs different ways of life um and I found friendships to be a really difficult thing to let go of and actually deciding that I did have to let it go and move on and there's always new people to me in different parts of the world and different ways of life yeah, I think we're so supported with sort of romantic heartbreak. And yeah. There's so much to consume if you are going through things like that. And there's so much support there. But when you're going through it with a friend, I, it, you sort of, 
feeling am I in the wrong like because there's obviously no cheating going on there's nothing yeah. actual actually happening for it to happen yeah. it's just a drift apart or you know growing in separate directions something so it's it is so difficult there are no like references I mean Dolly Alderton's doing a great job of like trying to change that I think with writing about female friendship and you know her predecessors of like sex in the city dealing with like fallings out that was like a really early representation that I saw like as a kind of 10 year old girl of like mm-hmm. oh female friendships falling out how does this work and same with um Lena Dunham's girls and I'm so grateful for those yes. things because if you don't see it you can't be it to misquote Michelle Obama but yes I love <laughs> that yeah there's no like pop songs about like falling out with your mate who's a girl no and there's not. It's not yeah that sword. Yeah, there's like a really great, I can't even remember her name on Instagram. She's like an agony, like sis type thing. And she's oh, cool. she's talked a little bit, I'll have to find what her name is. She talks a little bit about like, she gives a lot of advice about what to do in lots of different situations within being a young woman. And somebody asked what to do about sort of drifting apart from her friend. And she said, you need to um, sort of attack it head on and, and say, look, we're obviously not on the same page in terms of of life mm. um let's respectfully sort of step back from each other mm. I didn't feel like I wanted to do that I wanted to yeah. let it fizzle yeah and I don't know whether that's what <laughs> we should carry on doing or not you know it's weird I think you I I'm a fizzler I'm team fizzle I think because putting an ending on it is very final. And it could be that you're just going through a a life change where like at this moment you're separate, but you might come together again. And if you have that conversation of like, you know, we're not gonna talk, let's take a step back. It's a bit like a breakup. And then that sort of makes it harder to maybe rekindle that friendship again when the time is right. Because I've definitely had that where it's like just a fluctuation, you know, certain times in your life, you're just at different points, um, but then you kind of find each other again. Yeah, I do feel like friendship does prevail. Some do. Um, mm. Is that the right word? Prevail? Yeah. 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 Um, you do have <laughs> those friends that you can go months without speaking to, and then you'll bump into them, and you'll be still talking to them for half an hour, mm-hmm. and you'll be like, oh, well, we should meet up. And then you're so busy, and then you don't meet up, but they're always there in the background. But it, you don't necessarily have to have a, a fallout, do you? They're just That's true. those friends that you just know are, are there, like, through and through I'm a big fan of like whatsapp voice note friendships where it's like we never see each other but we have like, <laughs> 20 minute voice notes <laughs> I love that we love a voice note don't we oh, I love a voice note. so much easier sometimes so you just gotta get it out there don't yeah. you yeah. like I don't have the time or patience to be tip tapping for uh, yeah <laughs> paragraphs <laughs> in the last episode we were sort of talking about how we dislike technology at the moment and how we feel like we've got 24 hour access to each other and it's not great for our mental health Mm. I think voice notes help that a little bit because I think it sort of takes away the 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 non-human aspect of communicating through tech um it's like the phone it's it's almost like a phone conversation but you're not interrupted (laughs) yeah Yeah. it is yeah it's like a little podcast actually yeah sometimes (laughs) a little three minute podcast to your friend yeah it's brilliant (laughs) and so our next sort of topic we were going to talk about I mean, we're going through this at the moment. It's really hurtful. Getting no's in the industry, finding that yes. Um, a lot of people always say, don't take no for an answer. You're not knocking on the right door if it is a no. Mm. What would you say about that? I think there's definitely wisdom in you're not knocking on the right door. I mm-hmm. think that in all aspects of life, if someone doesn't want you, then screw them because their yeah. loss you know what I mean and if and so and the right person is the person who will want you and get you and see that whatever it is you have to offer whether that's you as a person or something creatively or professionally they'll get it even if it's not quite there yet they'll be like oh I see what you're doing and I share your vision um but it's of course it's really really hard. <laughs> I had a professional yeah. rejection not that long ago and I it's it's really really tough but I think what it is is that I need to go to a different person basically I think I just went I knocked on the wrong door like you say and I'm gonna Mm -hmm. go knock on some other doors um but also for the first time in my life and I think this is another benefit maybe of getting a bit older um I'm sure I hope women in their 40s and 50s listen to this podcast and I imagine them being like you're older shut up like you don't know what you're talking about (laughs) but for the first time in my life 
I genuinely saw that rejection as an opportunity, which I've never really had before. It was the first time that I've taken rejection and I've gone, okay, maybe this isn't actually good enough, this thing that I am offering. Maybe I need to go back to the drawing board. And if I'm really honest with myself, is this at a standard that I can stand behind wholeheartedly and be like, yeah, I'm really, really proud of this. Like, no question. Mm -hmm. And when I was honest with myself, I was like, no, actually, it does need a bit of work. I'm going to do some more work on this before I go knock on those other doors. Um, and then the work that I did on it, I felt so good about and made made it so much better that I was like, oh, I'm so grateful that I got that rejection now because I have gone away and I've made this thing better. And now any other doors that I knock on, I know like my integrity is intact because I'm offering something that I completely believe in rather than something that I'm like, is this good enough? Will you take it? I'm offering something that I know I fully love and fully believe in and people don't get it, they don't get it. Yeah. Oh, Nell. So we were talking to Laura Whitmore in the first episode mm. about us being overly, well, me being overly nice and not mm. wanting to to say no to people who've written some articles for us or something like that, and 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 finding it difficult to tell people that their work's not right. Mm. And and Laura said, yeah, but then they're going to go back and and refine it, and and they are going to get that yes because they're going to develop based on what you've said. So it's sort of like being on the other side, really yeah. hearing you say that it's not yeah. always a bad thing um, mm. because we can always go back and develop and, and grow um, in any sense of, of sort of the situation, where whatever you're getting and knowing. Mm. Um, but I that's also, lovely. I'm the same as you. I, find, I hate saying no to people. And Yeah. I also, also think, I think you know how vulnerable it is to offer up work and you know how painful it is to get that note that you're just highly empathic to... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, well, we just did some like great judging of magazines at Graduate Fashion Week last week. And oh, it was cool. it was just it was a whole day of people literally like pouring their heart onto the table. Their passion projects <laughs> all, all over the room, you know, and it was it, it was it was a lot, wasn't it? Yes. And we had to pick one of 12. Oh, and, and every single one was this months and months and months of work and they were all so brilliant because it was the top 12 in the country wow. how how do yeah. we do that we just you know? kept looking at each other and going god they've put so much time into that and so much effort they've made that by hand god they've gone out and done all of this work and they've mm. came all the way to London for the journey and yeah with their and... families and things and oh. we're gonna and we're gonna say no oh, no <laughs> God, it hurts me thinking about it. Well, you've but you've got to do that. Sound like you let them know that you could see how much work they put into it. There was there was feedback, yeah. So when yeah. they did, did did the presentation, we give that we said how much. It know, was all good feedback. It was always good feedback, yeah. wasn't yeah. it? And if yeah. there was anything we felt they could frame differently or whatever, or any way they could develop, it was always in a positive way. We would we would only ever give them anything positive so they would have had a great they probably were just happy to be there to be fair yeah. to be honest we did also say that we did think some people were in the wrong category because some people were bringing fantastic things and it was a fashion publication award and we were going actually you could take this to lazy off you could be a brand director this is a concept rather than a magazine a flat magazine so that was quite difficult but yeah hopefully they all left inspired to go and potentially just take it a bit outside of a magazine because that's yeah what they need we were talking about the nice girl approach with Laura Whitmore um mm. you are the loveliest person oh, thanks. do you <laughs> oh, thanks. Um, do you um sort of feel that there's I don't know how to phrase this a pressure <laughs> to be nice do I struggle with nice girlness yes that's it yeah I very very much do definitely I um um a probably lifelong recovering codependent I definitely grew up like not being able to say no just like wanting to be liked and you know now I have the hindsight to be like oh god that's so like thirsty <laughs> but when I was young I was like surely if I'm just really nice people will like me but it can, yeah it was like too much um yeah but it comes from like a good place. I think it just comes from like wanting to get on with people and be open to the world. But it definitely led to like being taken advantage of specifically for me in romantic relationships. Like mm -hmm. I let guys just treat me like crap without knowing, it. like I didn't know what I was putting up with, but I was just like, oh, but I'm just lovely. I'm just a lovely girlfriend. And no, like I was being a doormat basically. And um, do you not to be negative about myself, but 
it's um saying no and 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 also just like having self not I think it's like a self knowledge journey because I think I just didn't didn't know like what I would want I was so used to being like I don't mind up to you I, I'm easy that I didn't know like what I did want I just had no idea and I almost had to like spend time alone and be like what do I like what do I want to do what what are my interests what are my passions how do I enjoy spending my time um and do you think that's translated across to industry work you know mm. maybe turning out oh sorry maybe turning down roles that um you just think I'm just too busy for or maybe saying yes to too many things um it is quite hard to find a balance without burnout I think yeah but also you're you're going to be a great person to work with when you're really kind and nice to people but it is really getting that balance between being tough and being nice yeah for sure yeah and also just protecting yourself and like like you say not getting burnt out not saying yes to too much not feeling responsible for everything and everyone around you and just remembering that the only person you're responsible for is you Mm -hmm. um and you can't you're no good to anyone if you're if you're burnt out or you're giving from a from an empty shell do you know what I mean if you've got nothing actually to give then yeah does that make sense (laughs) yeah it does I'm getting so inspired sat here I'm like I'm jealous of the listeners who get to listen to this (laughs) this is so great that you're doing this podcast guys are you loving oh good oh thank you well the idea is that obviously it comes out on a Sunday Mm. I just want to it, we hope it's a tool to like reset for the week so people nice. feel oh, that's such a good idea. quite a calming thing few motivational words obviously from inspirational people mm. um and just to kind of really combat those Sunday scaries it's something that we ask every guest that we've had on so far <clears throat> excuse me um and kind of like what do you do to reset for the week ahead when you know you've got a busy schedule mm. and you've got a lot on and you just need to take that time what is it that you find yourself doing it's such a good question I get the Sunday scaries so badly guys they're like my worst I literally have this joke that like you could lock me in a in a blank room with no clock and no calendar and I would just know in my bones when it was Sunday because I just (laughs) do you know what I mean you can just feel it when it's Sunday because you just get this like dread um for me uh what do I do I think I've just, I've gotten really into um, different forms of exercise really helped me. Exercise is my stress buster and it's like my meditation, which I never thought I'd say I used to hate exercise. Um, but I've reached a place with it probably from COVID actually, from lockdown when I got um, a yoga teaching qualification during that time. And it like really connected with, with my body. And I think there's something mm-hmm. about connecting with your body and your breath, whether that's just like going for a walk without your phone or doing a bit of yoga or doing something more intense that's really helpful for me because I think that Sunday scary thing is probably for me an overload of anxiety meaning I'm too much in my head and for me the cure for that is to get into my body and get out of my head so that's Mm -hmm. a really good one for me Mm -hmm. Um, and also like treat myself like I'm just really nice to myself on Sundays because Sundays are so depressing so if I'm like do you know what I want to take out or I'm going to have a glass of wine or like a big bar of chocolate, whatever it is, just be really nice to yourself. Yeah, mm, that's a really good one. I mean, we've got like obviously jobs around Sunday, girls. So we all sort of work nine to five, Monday to Friday. Mm. So the Sunday scaries are quite prevalent in our yeah. lives sometimes. Yeah. Aren't yeah. They? And yeah. it's just the usual sort of making sure your bag's packed or making sure you've been on a lovely walk or making the most of your weekend because there's absolutely nothing worse than the feeling yeah. like, there's a, there's a saying where it says like when you worry about something mm. you you get the negativity twice because when yeah. it actually happens you've got it but you've also worried yourself silly about it yeah. so what's the point in prolonging the yeah. discomfort absolutely I know um, another one that's worrying is praying for the thing you don't want to happen yes Which that's is true <laughs> yeah. so it's so important to be positive and just have a positive mindset and think it's gonna go well it's always gonna go fine mm. and I feel yeah I feel that sort of mm. also one of, the, are... one of my favorite shout out to um there's a bar instructor <clears throat> in LA who I really love I do her online videos she's called Marnie Alton love her stuff 
she's on YouTube. You can check out her videos for free. I don't work for her. I don't know why I'm plugging her so much. <laughs> but um, <laughs> one of the things she says when it's like a really tough bit of the workout and you're like, oh, I just want to stop. I don't want to do this anymore. Is she says, this time's going to pass anyway. So you can either spend it doing this exercise for 30 more seconds or not, but the time's going anyway. And I feel like that's quite useful for anxiety when you've got like a lot of things in the week ahead is you're like well the week's gonna happen like yeah whether I do those things or don't do those things like this time is gonna pass yes that's and such a good like one. surrender yeah yeah absolutely and you can either spend it worrying and being yeah. negative or you can spend it making the most of yeah. things I, I love that um I feel like our podcast has so many great sort of Ta- like taglines and like little <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's like gems of information and quotes yeah, little sound bites. <laughs> definitely have to make that into a soundbite <laughs> um Nell can you tell us any sort of upcoming projects you've got going on or anything you want to tell the listeners about so Outlander season seven just released yesterday so wow. I- Leary, my character, will be returning for series seven, which I know the Outland fans will be excited about. Um, (laughs) And then the next thing coming out is, um, well, two things are coming out around the same time, which is a horror film I filmed ages ago. I'm really happy it's finally coming out because I'm really excited for it, which is called The Queen Mary. Um, I saw that. Is that with the mask? That's with the mask. It's um, (laughs) my character in the 1930s. It's set on the actual Queen Mary, which is a boat that was built at the same time as the Titanic and it still exists and it was repurposed as a warship during the war and it's got lots of like mysteries surrounding it and it's famously very very haunted so they were like clearly we need to make a horror film about this and that's what we did so that's coming out um around the autumn I know it's coming out in August in the US so I'm not really sure about UK release date but probably like autumn and then a tv show called The Doll Factory is coming out, I think, in the autumn on Amazon, which is about the pre-Raphaelite painters. Um, but it's kind of like slightly gothic, dark theme. Um, and yeah, my paperback of my book is out. You can buy the paperback of my book, which mm-hmm. we talked about earlier in the podcast. So if that sounds like your kind of thing, you can get that as well. Yeah. You can get it on the shelf. Yes, definitely. And I'll it's send you a copy. In... I'll send you guys a copy. Is your, address, oh. is your address at the bottom of your email? Yeah, I'll send it to you. I mean, we want to support you. We'll buy it. Oh, bless we'll you head guys. to <laughs> And it's caught in Spanish as well. It's been translated into Spanish, hasn't it? It's been translated into Spanish and Russian and something else, which is wow. just so bizarre. It's so cool. Is that a pinch me moment right there? <laughs> it is. It's, yeah, it's very surreal. Very, very surreal and really wonderful. Like, yeah, it, yeah, it's incredible. You need to write more books, I think. I think this is a sign. That needs to be next one. That's very much oh, really? I love, yeah, I absolutely love writing. Writing is like therapy for me. I mean, it's hard work, don't get me wrong. But yeah, writing is a yeah. um, big passion. Definitely more books coming oh, soon. Wow, oh, fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much, Nell. We've got your cover behind us. I thought what I was a very lemon shoe. Love it. How brilliant. So it was so good. <laughs> so, so good. Thank you. We've, we've loved speaking to you. Thank um, you. Yeah, it's, it's been brilliant. It has so been thank brilliant. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you. And we'll oh, see you load out on Instagram soon. Yeah, get yeah. Some Sunday I scaries out the way. good for you guys tomorrow, and we don't all get the Sunday scaries. So yeah, I'll be thinking of you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Nell. Chat thank to you, you later. Bye. 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 Bye.